window. I believe I did. You can use it this time. Yeah. Hello everyone, Eric Watson here, freelance writer, player of games, writer of words, recorder of videos, and tabletop role-playing aficionado. Welcome to our weekly live-streamed Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition online role-playing adventures. I'm joined as always by my good friends, Chris, playing the noir detective, human, inquisitive, rogue, Mannix. Hello. Heather, coming. Just, she's coming. coming. There he is, playing the wickedly <laughs> silent but deadly half-drow assassin, rogue, Coles. Rochelle. That was Impressive timing. That on was her. good timing. Yeah, I saw. I saw the hand wave. She acknowledged. <laughs> Rochelle playing popular and charismatic Triton Bard of Whispers, Gillian. Hello. Uh, Raymond is not going to be joining us this week, so we go to Reese playing the undead, hating, animal loving hill dwarf druid of the moon, Theron. Hello. We stream our sessions live on YouTube every Friday evening. Catch up on previous episodes on my YouTube page as well as read weekly session recaps at roguewatson.com. Watch my behind-the-scenes, no players allowed live series, Crafting Annihilation, on Thursday mornings. If you would like to support the channel, please check out patreoncom RogueWatson. Shoutouts to Platinum patrons Andrew, Brian, Richard, and Joe, and Gold patrons RPG Papercrafts, Charming Grenade, Pretty Boy, and Yuma, Marcos, David, Vicente, Gilberto, Sean, aka Cert 2B, Adam, Dead Lizard Lounge, and Alkshi. Thank you all for your support. For our campaign, we use Roll20.net, and for streaming, I use Open Broadcaster software with Streamlabs. I suppose I should add in there that I use, we use Discord for video chat as well that is that is a thing sometimes yeah. that's a thing that we do yeah that's, that's accurate it is friday happy friday happy international women's day today yeah Thank you, apparently are we, are, we, are we gonna have a themed <laughs> session I, I don't know the the women got me out of a jam in XCOM today when i was streaming so i'll say that it was <laughs> there you go. it was all the ladies previously on tomb of annihilation after making their way to the center of the maze and finding the Grung village, the party had witnessed a ritual involving two prisoners fighting to the death. Manic spoke to the victor, Olama. She was a survivor of a sky shipwreck. The star goddess had been attacked by Terrafolk while flying over Chult, and she'd been taken prisoner by the Terrafolk and then by the Grung. She wasn't the only prisoner, however. From their hidden vantage point, the party saw both Gillian and Azaka marched into the temple as the Grung prepared their next round. Mannix freed a llama and gave her his sword, while Theron spoke the language of the frogs and rallied them to rise up against their oppressors. Mannix and Theron, you can both have some inspiration for getting allies <laughs> in your own special allies. ways. <laughs> uh, the party stealthily crept towards the temple and attacked right when Azaka's chains were removed, and Gillian tackled her to the floor. Gillian, you can have some inspiration for attempting to uh, not die at Azaka's hands. <laughs> Azaka wasn't too pleased, but was also interested in killing Grung. So she let her lycanthropy take control and <laughs> tore into the surrounding Grung and a bit into Gillian. Theron Frog leapt inside to join the fray while the others began mounting a full scale assault on the warrior Grung guarding outside. A massive battle ensued. But gradually, our heroes got the upper hand and made it inside the temple while uh, most of the Grung lie dead. The entire village was roused, however, and in moments they would swarm the temple and butcher the invaders. But Kales had gotten through to Azaka and pointed her toward the crown-wearing Golden Grung, clearly their leader. Uh, somebody tell Kales she can have inspiration when she comes back. <laughs> Azaka pounced, and the Grung promptly surrendered. The Red Grung handed over their thorny staff, while the party greedily grabbed the piles of treasures the king had surrounded himself with, including the crown off his head. The Grung allowed them to leave, and Theron used the staff to cut a quick exit through the maze, where Vorn and Annette waited. That is where we bring ourselves. You all have fled uh, the Grung village in the swamp. Um, at this point, as we can go to the map area, it is late, uh, probably approaching evening now. Wait for the map to load. Hexes! Hexes! So many hexes! All my hexes live in Texas. I'm sorry. I'm so. I'm so <laughs> sorry. I, can't. I will oh. allow it. That was pretty good. <laughs> I don't know where that came up. Um, you all managed to travel for maybe about a mile uh, to the west. I believe you said you wanted to follow up on the uh, the shipwreck. We still have a llama with us, right? You now, still right? have a llama with you. Yes. You also have a zaka with you, but a zaka is still out cold. Like you have to. Right. Somebody has to like help She's her. 
Um, yeah, Vorn. Just his you walk around with an open palm. Yeah. Um, sure. <laughs> just like like a like a platform that we can just yes. rest a person on. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, get that for a second. Yep. <laughs> um, all, I, all of so you I are missing. Question. Yeah, go ahead. Has has a day passed recently? So we're <laughs> still <laughs> we're still on the same. We're on evening of that day. Like all, almost no time has passed. Know? You want to know how many spell slots I have? I, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> okay. You are all looking ex- exceedingly banged up and weakened. Um, you basically all make make it like you're just, you're trying to get distance between you and this entire grung behind you because you're not sure how mm-hmm. long this like armistice is going to actually last. It was hardly even an armistice. It was like just almost like we call it like hostage situation where we had the king. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, you basically just tried to force march yourselves far away from uh, that area, and you make it, like I said, maybe a mile or so uh, toward the west. You basically approach, if you can see, there's a uh, uh, river right here uh, hmm. that essentially you don't try crossing right now because it's basically evening time, but uh, uh, to the west because you're heading towards the wreckage that you saw. Um and at this point, you all are basically just collapsing. Like, you're you're just set out your shit. You need to just kind of rest as quickly as possible. I do need you all to give me an update to um, your nighttime watch schedule because you have more people now with you. Your your party has ballooned quite a bit. <laughs> we, just, um, we added two. You added two, yeah. yeah. So by my calculations, it's you, uh, five... Plus two Tabaxi is seven, Vorn is eight, Alama is nine, and Azaka is ten. Is that right? Yes. That In sounds right. Theory, couldn't we put Vorn on like overnight duty? Because he doesn't have to sleep. He doesn't and have then to we sleep. All get to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. You want to just put him on? I would say I, would, I still want to have just in an excess of caution at least one person up in each shift. Maybe Vorn and somebody else. Not that I don't trust Vorn, but it seems like a really nice guy. I want somebody a bit more... Uh... You don't trust my death robot? <laughs> Theron can probably do it. He's probably really uncomfortable with all the people in the party now. <laughs> this is, this... He's having a hard time going to sleep. This is getting a bit too crowded. Yeah. Let's kill three of you. <laughs> <laughs> um... um... Uh, I'll take one. No, no. Um, Four of you. <laughs> <laughs> you can all pick yourselves. <laughs> That's right. All right, Mannix has one. Uh, Theron, I'll take the next. I can probably just use you, because Raymond's not here. I could just use the four of you and put you in the four slots. I'll make it easy. Oh, Kles. <laughs> And Gillian, and then Vorn will always be available and watching. You note that Vorn yeah. probably has, isn't actually the most observant. Uh, That's exactly what Mannix was thinking. It yeah. was like, like he just seems like a very reactionary sort yeah. of. Yeah, I mean, you think he could he could do the job if he saw something, but you're not sure how well he can actually see stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, you can also identify before you actually sleep sleep tonight, which will be a short rest sleep. And bear with me um, <laughs> before you say anything. Uh, you can identify the loot you got from Dungrung Lung, which is, yeah. spoiler alert, the Dungrung. name of the village, yeah. Uh, you got... we never learn. We'll never know. You'll never know, yeah. I, you'll know because I told you. Now it's on your map. You've unlocked that location. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know. Um, you have... Actually, it's not, but... Or is that... Uh, oh, I see it now. It's, it's like tiny letters. Tiny yeah, letters. Yeah, it's tiny it. letters. There's a lot of things happening right here. I well, yeah. I'll talk about this more in the post campaign, but I kind of shuffled things around. Um, <laughs> you all got three items in a, uh, three magical items in addition to a lot of uh, coinage and art objects, which I hopefully we already divvied out last session, I believe. Uh, if you scroll, I don't think we. I don't think we divvied out any of the money. Okay, I'm gonna copy paste it, it again. I'll do the math. Okay, that was the money. And then there were uh, a couple a art staff, objects. Staff, a crown, a figurine. Yeah, those oh, were the... Yeah, the art object. I think there were three art objects, right? Mm. Pretty I sure I took my share of the money because I divided that by five in my head because 
I don't know. Cause you assume we would be doing this. Yep. Bone flute, a gold necklace, I don't think I and a copper chalice. So there's money, and then there's three kind of we're just gonna call them art objects, but things that are not magical but look like they would be worth money. In other words. Staff in addition, of thorns. Staff of thorns. <laughs> yes, yeah. There were three. There were, and can I uh, have the flute? I want. Flute. I want the necklace. Now the play honor it. among thieves comes out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Alama retrieved her uh, her own equipment at some point in that temple. There was in there. So, uh, Manix, you can have your machete back. Oh, okay. But she thanks you. What what is her equipment, by the way? Like, what is, what does it look like? She is she just has a of? sword, sword, and leather armor. It's real, just basic. Oh, okay. Basic shit. She's just a basic swordsman. Is yeah, it better than some... ours? Can we leave ours? And put <laughs> it does not look better than yours. Um, the staff is the staff of thorns. I don't have a thing for it, so I'm just gonna have to hear me out. <laughs> Um, it does require attunement uh, for druids only. Uh, once you oh. attune to it, first of all, it can be wielded as a magic quarter staff with a plus one to attack and damage rolls. It adds vine whip as a cantrip if you don't already have it. The staff has ten charges. It regains one d six plus four charges each day, and you can spend charges to cast the spells that it has as an action using your own spell. DC and attack uh, things. If you expend all its yes. charges, you roll a d20. On a 1, it loses all magical properties. Uh, any spells that require concentration still require concentration. Uh, with the staff, you can cast Entangle <laughs> for 1 charge, Spike Growth for 2 charges, Plant Growth for 3 charges, Speak with Plants for 3 charges, Grasping Vine for 4 charges, and Wall of Thorns for 6 charges. Wow. I can't write that fast. I will copy and paste <laughs> my notes, although they are just kind of Scattering, but nice staff of thorns. That is the. Does uh, anybody want this? The gr- <laughs> <laughs> They'll take it. Theron finally gets something. Yay! <laughs> Hooray! Yep. So I don't know how you want to put that in your sheet. I realize I probably should have done this. Well, we always run out of time late at night. But good luck putting all that in there. I don't know how you want to ch- you. keep track of the charges or any of the spells and all that stuff. But hopefully, you can figure out a way to do it. <laughs> hopefully, I did have that. I used to be a wizard. That's true. I don't remember how I did it then, so... We have new <laughs> character sheets, though, on these. From then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You can either it's do it like the it. spell, like the class resource, to where it takes off yeah. one of those, treat it like an ammunition, maybe? I don't know. And then you have to ch- tech off a, however many charges. I don't know. That seems like a nightmare. I'm glad I'm not keeping track of that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I graduated from high school. <laughs> uh, the crown. Uh, I actually yes. do have a thing for that. Uh, is a circlet of blasting. Not even much of a crown, it's like a little tiara. Mm. Uh, it does not require gross. attunement, but while wearing it, you can use an action to cast the Scorching Ray spell with it. When you make the spells attacked, you do so with an attack bonus of plus five. The circlet can be used. This can't be used this way again until the next dawn. So it gives you a once per day scorching ray, uh, the plus five attack. Which scorching ray, I believe, is the one that just makes three, like fire mm-hmm. lasers. I think, yeah. I think so. I'll take that. Laser beams. Laser beams. Assume you shoot them Ooh. out of the blast. Out of Have the- that in bear form. <laughs> <laughs> Laser bear. <laughs> Laser bear. <laughs> the third item is a uh, a carved figure of a frog, and you can use an action to speak the uh, command word or phrase, and you choose the words when you first use it, and you throw the figurine on the ground uh, in an unoccupied space within 60 feet, and the figure transforms into a giant frog. The giant frog is friendly to you and your companions, understands your languages, and obeys all commands. The giant frog lasts for eight hours or until its hit points is reduced to zero, uh, or you can speak the command word again. At the end of its duration, however, it reverts back to its small figurine form. After use, it must remain in figurine form for two full days before it can be used again. It is the giant frog figurine. All right. Um, 
Perhaps Manic should take that. Then he's got a bodyguard. I, I was just thinking, if, if, if Max is going to take any of those items, he would take the staff. I'll take that. It would be the figurine. I'll take that. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the toad thing. Who wants the laser beams? Definitely not George. <laughs> uh, sorry, what's the laser beams? Which one's that? The circlet. The tiara, the circlet of blasting. It's a once oh, per yeah. day sounds, uh, scorching that ray. That's very fun. I will yeah. take that. <laughs> that also seems to be something Gillian would wear too. <laughs> I, it looks very ornate. And yeah. Like a little, a little like Wonder Woman-y. With the mm -hmm. and... <laughs> Give me something a bit more Wonder Woman-y, please. <laughs> On a hit, so make a range spell attack for each ray. Three rays of fire and a hit the target takes 2d6 fire. I wonder if we can just plop that into your character sheet like another attack. That might be the easiest way to do it. Yeah, if you just want to figure out how to do that for me, that would be <laughs> You know, this is the problem. Offering. This is what the problem with doing loot at the beginning of the session rather than the end, because now it's like you got to <laughs> set all this stuff up now that you got all these fancy new items. Because we want to use it now, yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm going to be jacking with your sheet for a second, so. I can add. Have at it. Let's see. Let's go. Circle it of blasting. It is an attack. Is uh, is this a figurine of wondrous power? Is that it, what this is? Uh, it is, but I had to use my own because there's not a frog. There's not a frog. Okay, so it's just replace the... There's one that does the same thing, but for a fly. You can just replace the toad with that. Oh, uh, yeah, I could. That's... Well, no, I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how to put it in my character sheet. It's like, a, like an actual attack or something. I don't know. Whatever makes the most sense to you. Okay. Image is 2D... Six uh, plus nothing. Fire. Crit two d six. I think this is set up right. Um, create three rays of fire. <coughs> What is the range on that spell? Doesn't say. It says you can hurl them at targets within range. Somebody give me the range of a scorching ray spell. Oh wait, never mind, I just didn't scroll down. 120 feet. <laughs> that's a damn good range. That is, that is quite a range. 120 feet. Uh, we're going to click proficiency off. Alright, let's see if this works. Um, okay, that rolled a base plus five. That's right. I rolled pretty well, too. Fifteen. And if you click that, does that roll damage? Uh, yes, I rolled really bad for damage. Okay, so Gillian, that should be in there as right below your psychic blades. Um, there's no way to really track once you've used this or not. I, I could put it as a resource, but I'm not going to bother. But you can use this once per day. But when you use it, you actually make three rays. You you would click this three times, and you can do it against either the same target or three targets or however you want to do it. Okay. Boom. You said this summons a giant frog? Is that what you said? Uh, summons a giant frog. Exactly what Theron giant was. Alright. Is. Is. <laughs> what? In, his, in his heart. In his heart. <laughs> That's the true face. All right, that is thine loots. Um, you all... Something I was yep. going to ask the group, though, uh, is Born has that mass healing word. Mm. If we want to go ahead and pop that, but it's a one-time mute. We're short resting right now? Yes. Well, some of us don't actually have hit die left. I do not. <laughs> I, I mean, what an asshole. 
you know, role playing wise, we probably <laughs> would coming out of that maze just as we're running away. <laughs> it's, it's... So yes, let's go ahead and do that. All right. Yeah, we'll use his mass healing word. Okay. Um, let me see. Mass healing word. Of six creatures of your choice, you can see within range, regain hit points equal to 1d4 plus your spellcasting ability modifier. Uh, what the hell was Undrolls? Probably a plus... Well, let's see. Is she still in here? She had a plus three. So you all would gain 1d4 plus three hit points. Let's roll that now. D4 plus three. That's not a great... <laughs> I guess because it's a but bonus it action. Like a... That's like your mid, yeah. Oh wow, yeah. I thought you said it was a third level spell. It is, it is. but it's 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 a bonus. It's AOE. It's a AOE it's... bonus action up to sixty feet, so it heals. Oh, I rolled pretty good. I mean, that's the best. It doesn't heal a lot, but it heals very quickly in the middle of combat. And everybody, yeah. And so does heal. Yeah. So all of you regain uh, seven hit points when he casts that. All right, I'm gonna use one of my hit dice. Says, oh dear. I hope this helps. A little. <laughs> I was so worried about all of you. There was loud screams coming from in there. There, uh, yeah. Lots of croaking. A lot, yeah. A lot of them were frog screams, but you know. Yes, us too. What is my current? Oh, yeah, I could actually use a hit die. So that was seven for that healing mm -hmm. word? Yeah, okay. Yep. Ah. All right, for that evening, um, I need <coughs> Celeste. Somebody controlling George's character sheet? Uh, I can do that. That would okay. be the DM's responsibility. <laughs> Damn it. George gets lost in a maze somehow. <laughs> if you give it to me, I, I will do it. I'll but... do it. God damn it. He is, uh... He was, he was out of hit dice from before. <laughs> he was, yeah. Uh, that, that's a, Right before the huge battle, he couldn't, Theron uh... and George were both hurt, and neither one of them could actually heal the short rest. Excellent. Alright, he benefited from the mass healing word, though. I feel very exposed. <laughs> There's no short rest button on here, is there? Am I missing that? You just have to... Mm. No, you only no. Like, created a long rest button. Yeah. <laughs> you, just, you just roll I, your hit dice. He gets back his to. second wind and action surge, I believe, right? Yes. Ah. Uh, okay. Alright, um, during the night, Kales, I need you to roll a perception check, and I will roll for Vorn, who also stays, keeps watch. Why me? Because I rolled like, it during your guard shift. Yeah, but my perception is shit. <laughs> well, so is Vorn's, apparently. Uh, I will take your passive, but depending on what your passive perception is, as a minimum. Well, 17, that's not bad. 17 is pretty good. Uh, so, Kales, it's the middle of the night. Things are pretty quiet. Um, you know, you kind of hear the sounds of the swamp all around you, but you're you're pretty attentive because you just fled from I uh, flee, but you got out of a situation that was very hostile, and you're aware that you're not very far from that situation. So, uh, at one point, you look over and you see a number of grung very stealthily making their way towards your camp. And oh, they, come on. They appear to be making some kind of... You, you, you look at them for a second, and they appear to be making hand signals and pointing at uh, Gillian, who is the one currently wearing uh, the king's tiara. <laughs> <laughs> Not, uh, let's see, there are... Not the Staff of Thorns, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the... the uh, the red one surrendered that to you willfully. You guys kind of snatched the crown. Oh, you think the red one got executed for subordination? Insubordination? <laughs> Let's talk grung politics. You, you, you think the king woke up and was very unhappy? You see about half a dozen green-skinned grung coalesce, and then as you notice, you do see one um, uh, orange-skinned grung who appears to be kind of leading the party, 
and they all appear to be looking for the crown and then they've kind of spotted it now they're creeping up toward they don't see that you have seen them yet um, they're all trying to stay okay. definitely hidden out of the way of Vorn though they're very aware of, of Vorn kind of doing his big obvious like <laughs> just jackass observatory over there <laughs> while we're all trying to sleep yeah. he's just making like <laughs> just worrying the loudest noises <laughs> That's kind of the point, though. He he is a very um, giant robot, yep. and, and he's moving around. Nobody wants to fuck with that. Yep. So, <laughs> I mean, um, I would like to think I have some kind of like a more silent communication that I could do with him that would alert him to wake everyone up while I pop dancing lights on top of the grung. I think you can communicate... Is that right? It's been a while since I actually looked at that stuff. Uh, <coughs> as long as the Guardian has amulet on the same plane of existence, the amulet's wearer can telepathically call the Guardian to travel to it, and Guardian knows the distance and direction to the amulet. So, yeah, I would probably allow at least basic telepathic communications. Um, I would just tell him... Alarm. Uh, right now, or do you want to do something else first? Well, I was going to tell him to set an alarm, like to have the alarm go off while I popped dancing lights on top of the grung because they think they're being stealthy. Okay. And I have a feeling that if I just scare the bejesus out of them, they might run away. <laughs> okay. Um. <coughs> all right, you look over as they are creeping... Uh, they're they're pretty close right now. They're probably like less than twenty feet away from the camp. Perfect. I'll pop um, four very bright lights right on top of them and yeah. light them all up. You you pop some uh, dancing lights right on top of them and just light up that whole area at the same time. Vorn just shouts, "Alarm! Alarm!" It's just just real That's... annoying and <laughs> it's horrendous. And all of you are just like, "Oh!" Just bolting upright. At the same point, the grung, like, freeze for half a second, and then they begin, like, croaking um, wildly. And uh, the at one, at one point, a few of the green ones move to, like, rush in towards the camp, but then the <laughs> orange one just starts making more louder proclamations, and it actually calls them back, and they do begin to uh, flee back the direction they came. Do you want to let them go, or do you want to do anything else? Uh, I mean... As they're fleeing, can I, like, intentionally miss with an arrow to, like, just tell them we know that they're there and to go away? Yeah. Yeah, you can okay. fire off a couple, like, warning shots at them as they flee. Yeah. Um, it's like that cool action movie warning shot arrow where it just, like, goes right <laughs> past the face. And the feather just touching their cheek. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you get the feeling that these ones did not want a stand-up fight. They wanted to just try to sneak in, steal the crown, and sneak out. Oh, um, you know what, Kales? If your perception check hadn't been high enough, Gilliam probably would have lost that crown. That's what just happened. Mm-hmm. You rolled really well. Uh, and you scared him off without uh, necessarily engaging in a fight. So, yeah, they, they flee. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and you're aware, like, the, you did just kill a lot of Grung, so they are very all too aware of, of your prowess. <laughs> it's... They were not interested necessarily in a straight fight there. Yeah. Now we're all waking up. Yep. Max is angry. Yep. You know, what down, in the hell is going on? Alarm! Alarm! He just keeps doing this, Galas. I'll, I'll tap his like, shoulder. I'll tap would you shoulder. like to elaborate, <laughs> robot? There is danger of a sort. Give him just him a little tap. It's okay. Silence. He gives a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> With the sword, I'll just point in the direction of the grung. Alama like grabs her sword out and she's like, Where are they? Where are they? I'm not going back. Don't let them take me. <laughs> oh, great. One with PTSD. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um. Otherwise, you all spend the rest of the evening uh, a little more paranoid, but um, not messed with. Uh, you get the benefits of your short rest. 
Yay. Mm-hmm. Yes. That is super good for me. <laughs> uh, the next morning, Theron, you all... Theron becomes a tank again. That's right. All my powers are restored. Uh, the next morning, you need to cross the river, and you feel like this is not a particularly fast-moving nor deep river, being in the middle of the swamp as it is, So, uh, and and the tabaxi even say, and they're not too fond of water, that you all can probably just ford uh, the river here, uh, especially with Vorn's help in case it gets super deep or anything. Mm. Is Zaka awake now, or is she still unconscious? She is a bit groggy now. She acts like she's hung over. Okay. Well, she does have seven hit points. She wakes up to Manic standing over her saying, Where are the canoes? <laughs> um, yeah, she says, uh, uh, I walk in the canoe in the middle of the river. Sneaky Batiri. Tried to get back, but was attacked by the crocodiles and soon hunted by Ubtal's children. Uh, you all recognize this is the phrase Chilton's refer to uh, dinosaurs as Ubtal's children. Oh, okay. The only way I could survive was by giving in to my curse. The weeks have been a blur. I hunted and killed like an animal, but as a tracker, I followed. The creature you awakened leaves quite the trail. She kind of nods to Vorn. <laughs> I had to stay clear of the Ordo's camp and ran into a large undead army marching upon it. I took out many of their forces from the river before they made it, but it took me further south to the basin. While asleep, I was ambushed by the frogs. Grung! No match for me, but I killed too many and drank deep of their skin. Pain from <coughs> inside. I, I woke up in their village. They are more clever than Batari. Use silver chains to bind me. It was weak. And when they were removed, I lost myself again. The I'm sorry, the canoes are lost. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I, I stopped listening to your yeah, story. It's like, just, you left I'm going to clue in when you mentioned canoes. He's again. like, yeah, yeah, he's just like, and, and, can- canoes, okay. Yeah. Well, damn. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm glad you're okay. I am glad you are all still alive as well. We uh, made it a lot further south than I thought any of us would. <laughs> yeah. It's been rough. Are you uh, back to your old self now? You up for travel? Up for taking up your old position? She nods. Um, you just think that she's just coming, coming off like being in wear tiger form for a long time and that was uh you know it's like constant adrenaline and then just kind of now she's paying the price for all that so she seems very weakened at the moment but she says she should be able to find herself again she is still interested in um at some point going to firefinger and trying to get that uh uh heirloom of hers that can help her control her uh, we're the hell back the way we came now. Yeah, like yeah. So you all got very much further away from it. Um, she does mention if we ever, if she, if you ever make it back to the city for any reason, that you could take the river back down, uh, the other river. Okay, that would take you closer. But for now, she's right, obviously yeah. willing to stick with you all because you seem uh, much more competent than any group she's been with, and you did rescue her from frog hell. Aw, thanks. <laughs> we're competent. That's right. Yeah, well, we're just competent. And if I shouldn't say that, just <laughs> more, <laughs> more yeah. says, You still have not killed the tabaxi. <laughs> For that, I am surprised. <laughs> tabaxi just glare at her. Like, they, they, they like this. They kind of bare their teeth at her. Like, <laughs> I've they've been on and off again. Yeah. Have they been thieving? Stealing anything from you, and that's the, the tabaxi start like, "Hey, no, wait a minute, we don't do that." 
That's not fair. Wait, is that what Tabaxi do? Do they steal from them? <laughs> Has like, that been going on? Gillian's this... like just checking her pocket. Yeah, yeah all of a sudden, like, wait. She waves her hands like the backseat, they do this all in the city. They're thieves. <laughs> now, now, now. Yeah, the backseat are indignant. Class has been uh, keeping a close eye on them. She's. They're, they're in line. <clears throat> God, we're all so fucking racist. <laughs> The more, the more we have these conversations. Hey, this is a very yeah, diverse, multicultural smart. world full of different species. You gotta imagine the racism is, like, jacked up to a thousand uh, there. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine all these folks get, away, get it along. Hashtag not all tabaxi. Mm. Not all tabaxi. That's right. <coughs> not my tabaxi. Schultz is a true melting pot. Um, so yeah, you all need to ford this river. It's not gonna require any skill checks or anything. You just have to kind of it slows you down for the day, but okay. Um, you do see a uh, on the other side of the river. You see a small herd of hadrosaurus grazing peacefully, uh, which are mm. the uh, two-legged herbivores. Oh, uh, I remember. Yeah, yeah. The dinosaur races kind of takes you back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as you near the shore, you uh, you get closer. And you're probably I don't know, 50 feet or whatever from the shore. And uh, amongst the herd, you spot a humanoid lizard riding atop a blue-gray triceratops with its horns blunted. Uh, the lizard folk is wearing leather armor and a feathered headdress and carrying a long pole that they begin to wave at the dinosaurs. Uh, at the end of the pole are several dangling objects that make noise as it shakes, and the herd begins to slowly move away from the water. At the same time, two more dinosaur-riding lizard folk appear on either side of the herd, each riding a hadrosaurus as they steer the herd. One of them sports a nasty scar over their eye and points in your direction and begins to shout, Well, hey there! Look what the river washed up! <laughs> the lizard folk there. turn and let out a series of whistles and grunts. Within moments, the herd shuffles to a stop. The one in the headdress slowly turns and stares at you all, and you notice she's covered in decorative paints and beads and feathers. Careful, Spitz! We don't know nothing about these folk. They don't look dead, that's good, but they may be snake folk. She cautiously lumbers her triceratops closer to you all and waves her staff. Y'all aren't snake folk, are you? <laughs> I guess we are. <laughs> I mean, no. I just look at I'm... the tabaxi and then look back at her. And then yeah. look back at the tabaxi. Right. <laughs> I mean, as you can clearly see, one of us is a turtle, two of us are cats, one of us is a fish. You know, there's, there's very little room for I'm snakes. the only normal one here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the most racist one of all. <laughs> I've got the pure blood. Right. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. <sighs> Um, the one in the headdress says, uh, Well, my name's Whispers and Wind. These are my sons. Spits at death and lost in swamp. She waves her hand at the other two who nod. We're simple ranching folk. Don't cause no trouble. Don't looking for no trouble. Understand? Sure. Uh, His accent is... <laughs> it's causing PTSD. Flashbacks. Y'all are the funny talking ones. I don't see hey, that's most, right. most of you folk here in the jungle. We've honestly never met anyone in this jungle who speaks quite like you all. They look like must... city folk, Mama. Is they from the city? I reckon they must be. <laughs> well, yeah. That... I do have sort of a city accent. <laughs> I can't speak for the rest of us. I know those two cat people used to be snakes. <laughs> Snake folk! Do with them what you will. Taxi say, no, we are not snakes. We do not like the snakes. There's no, there's no snakes anywhere around here. <laughs> There's zero, zero percent snakes. We've 
been snake free since three days ago. That's right. Gillian is just looking like so far down at these people. She just. <laughs> As you emerge from the river, just yeah, covered in like the down. muck and the swamp stuff. <laughs> Disgusting <laughs> outlanders. <laughs> like, well, what are you folks doing out here? Dying. Uh, attempting not to die at the moment. They look pretty You're bad, pretty Mama. You folks are ranchers, you said. That's right. Got a whole herd. You, uh, ranch. <laughs> we take care of Oobtow's children here near the basin. We raise them. We feed them. They feed us. Circle of life. We're kind of near Mabala now, aren't we? Or not? Not that near. I guess we're closer to Dark Eyes. The, yeah. Um, you happen to have an enclosed space that we can sleep in for eight hours. <laughs> we would be appreciative of any um, hospitality you kind folk would deem gracious enough to offer us. One of the other lizard folks says, uh, they look real bad, Mama. That one looks like it's almost dead. And you're not quite sure which of you he's referring to. <laughs> um, she stares at you all in turn for several long moments. And you get the feeling that she is very much sizing you up. I like to size her up at the exact same time. Oh, it's a Hello? size off! <laughs> <laughs> The camera ver, ver, ver. <laughs> I like to roll an insight check with my ear for deceit. Just see, you know, not I, I, I believe them pretty much, but you know, just a yeah, general. These are simple country folk in the gym. Yeah. <laughs> what could um, go wrong? <clears throat> Manix. Uh, do you actually roll for that, or is that just your insight is 14? Yeah, yeah, I oh, roll, there you go. Okay. but I still rolled 21. So. Um, I still rolled 21. You're pretty sure they are simple jungle folk. You do know they don't seem to match <laughs> the average simple jungle folk. Um, you probably have known or read something about lizard folk before, and you're pretty sure lizard folk are usually not this amiable. Um, uh. Lizard folk tend to be highly territorial. They've been known to eat people. Um, they're not usually very nice. They're not necessarily evil, but, um, you know, usually have, like, customs that aren't necessarily align with most of the other races. Right. Um, so these they're are like unlike... Almost... Yeah, these are unlike a lot of uh, lizard folk that you've heard of. Uh, but these ones do appear earnest and uh, congenial for the moment, at least. Okay. Uh, you're not quite sure they have the capacity to be deceptive, given their how they're acting. Hmm. Okay. So, well, so how do you, uh, have this ranching operation out in the jungle this close to Grung and other children of... Yeah. Well... J jungle. Very carefully, we know our way around the jungle. Uh... Grung don't usually mess with us too much. We don't cross the river into their territory. Um, as for the bigger Oobtow's children, well, it's sometimes a problem, but uh, near the swamp, usually not so much. The biggest problem is the dead. Oh, the dead don't understand territory. They're not afraid. So much. They're, yeah. <laughs> and they're not afraid of nothing. You can't. You can't put up a scarecrow for the dead. They don't care. And they've been getting worse no, lately. Not. It's getting dangerous. I won't send my boys out alone much more. You understand? Absolutely. But you folks ain't dead, so that's good. We're not. In fact, we're very much alive. <laughs> <laughs> we're so alive. More and more alive than alive. <laughs> Outside of just generally staying alive, our overarching goal here in the jungle. 
Step one, stay alive. <laughs> That's right. Check. Our overarching goal here in the jungle is to, in fact, find the source of these dead, as you call them, and put an end to the source of it. She squints her eyes. You some sort of a witch? No, but we know Bad witches. people are. <laughs> they know witches, Mama. Yeah, I heard them. I don't like the magic so much, you understand. A lot of bad stuff comes out of it. I well, you can do whatever you want to the cat people. <laughs> they have all sorts of magic. <laughs> just talking about the cat people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm right there with you, ma'am. But as it happens, the source of these walking dead are is in fact... Oh, careful, that's trademarked, son. <laughs> 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 and zombies isn't? <laughs> sure <it's... coughs> um, I'm pretty sure the source of them is more of that foul magic you despise so much. She nods sagely. Oh, you're trying to clean up the witchcraft. Ah, uh, that's right. Well, I guess that sounds pretty good. If you can deal with that problem, we'd be most grateful. But, uh, yeah. Have you, as it, have you, uh, to be honest, ma'am, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm surprised you're all still alive here. <laughs> because the dead are, a, have been a Me serious problem. Yeah. The dead have been a serious problem farther north of you. She nods and says, ah, I'm afraid of that. We've been trying to track them all around us, and it's been getting worse and worse. Seems like it's coming in from all sides. We may have to just pick up the whole herd and move somewhere else. If it gets much worse than this. Thankfully, the dead do seem to get stuck in the swamps a bit, so we sticking near the swamp seems to deter them somewhat. How many of you, how many of these dead have you seen at a time? Because we have happened upon armies of these creatures. At that, her eyes widen. She's like, oh my, no. I haven't seen that many yet. Both the sons just kind of shake their heads nervously. And now they've got, mm. you've got like rapt attention now. They're like staring at you in awe. <laughs> you battled wow. armies of undead? We, ba we battled undead T Rexes, ma'am. <laughs> oh no. I heard about bigger things rising up as dead. That ain't right at all. But yes, yes. we have a place just a few miles west of here. Uh, if you all would like to come and rest a spell. Maybe get a nice home-cooked meal here in the jungle. That's oldest here is a bit of a cook. That sounds fantastic. One of us would love a long rest so she could stop complaining about her spell slots. <laughs> I didn't complain. I was just asking a question. <laughs> I was just asking if we passed the day yet. <laughs> um... You all travel for a few her uh, a few hours along with the herd. Uh, the lizard folk do seem very experienced at keeping the dinosaurs together and moving steadily. Um, before dusk, you reach the edge of the swampland and find several wooden buildings and a lot of fencing. Um, just kind of built all around the tree. Not really like it's torn down all the trees or anything. It's really built around the land. Um, the suns take over getting the herd moved into the fenced area. She directs you all over to the ranch house. You see numerous paintings hanging all around the house. Really beautiful paintings depicting various uh, wildlife of the jungle. And she says, uh, My youngest, lost in swamp, fancies himself an artist. Not exactly many art shows around these parts, but keeps him out of trouble. What trouble could he get to out of here? He shrugs, Oh, go chasing after the Ooptow's children and poking at the dead when they get stuck in the swamps and <laughs> that's just I know. I... Maddox knows where Theron was going with that <laughs> <laughs> there's not much to do out here I'm afraid yeah right not many <laughs> folk like us out here you know it's dangerous areas uh, we if you don't mind me asking ma'am I, I've, I've known a bit, precious few of you lizard folk in my days, but 
You're unlike I've ever, any I've ever met. May I ask how you ended up being such kind ranch folk here in the jungle? Well, we as friendly as those we meet. But, uh... At this point, one of the, the sons have kind of come in now and start setting the table. And uh, one of them says, uh, Mama says some of our folk eat other folk, but we don't be doing that because it's undignity. It's, it's undignity. It's, un it's, it's undignified. That's right. Wow. You put my racist mind at ease. <laughs> Breaking down stereotypes, That's one right. after another. The lizard country folk stereotype. <laughs> That's right. We it's a new it's a new stereotype. We always be welcoming folks, no matter what they look like or who they worshiping. Except for the snake folk, though they. There we go. They're bad folk. You understand? <laughs> Everybody's a little. We never, we never did meet a oh, snake wow. snake folk that was anything but nasty. And she leans forward. And the problem with snake folk is some of them can look like you folk. You wouldn't even know it. I... Sarah starts to get real nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm generally familiar with some people that I believe you might be describing from back in my city days. Are you describing I told you, you on he was team, a city man? folk. <laughs> You're describing you on team, man. Yeah, that's right, the Yunty. Yes. Yunty? <laughs> we call them well, snake folks. I've only known a few of those in my life, and I haven't much cared for them either. So, I'm right there with you. Um, I used to date one, in fact. <laughs> she was terrible. One of the sons says, uh, I was out hunting on my own and saw a big group of folks moving through the jungle. And Mama says, when I'm by myself, I should uh, hide and watch first. So it did. Uh, I saw lots of human folks, but then some had the snake heads. They was snake folks. They was, uh, they was heading north. I stayed hidden and they never saw me. Heading north from here. Hmm. Probably to Oralunga. Uh well, I don't see anything north of here except for Mabala and Camp Vengeance. Oh, I'm going to move you guys one more. You guys are oh. pretty much here right oh. now. Do they look armed? Uh, he nods. So they, they, were, look they were loaded. Hmm. And they were headed north. He says, it didn't look here. like they were headed into the swamp, but they were just kind of headed a general and northerly direction. At least they were coming from the south. It was... Yeah. He'll confirm that much. Okay. Yeah, maybe Oralunga then. Yeah, they could, they could have cut cut over mm -hmm. to the west a bit. Is Oralunga... Is that the place we're... When you mention Oralunga, um, his eyes grow wide. He says, oh, the snake folk ruins. I always wanted to go there, but Mama says it's too dangerous. She says, that's... That's right. We don't go that far. We don't, we don't cross the river over there. Evil place. All the snake folk up to evil stuff. Almost certainly. That's almost certainly where those snake folk were going. She kind of nods worriedly. I wouldn't worry about too much about them. At least not more than I'd worry about the dead. Yeah, and as you guys were coming in, you kind of noticed, like, maybe one or two zombies, like, stuck in the swamp or something, and the, they do, like, the Walking Dead thing with the sons going, like, stab them, like, in the head with a spear. <laughs> and it does seem like they're slowed down, but uh, they kind of, uh, they everybody at the table seems to kind of shake their heads when you mention the dead, and the fact that that does seem to be getting a lot worse for them. Uh, mm -hmm. It used to be. And they said, you know, the dead have always been a part of Chult. Like, it's always, they've had this problem because of this warlord, Rosnizi, that that rose this army of the dead, and laid uh attacked this capital city in ancient times and then he was defeated but the dead were just kind of scattered around in the jungle so they were always kind of a problem but now the problem is and you all know this that basically everybody that dies becomes undead and that's been rapidly increasing the danger and ferocity of the undead in the jungle right 
So people are kind of people that live in and around Schultz are used to dealing with undead in a way, but <laughs> it has definitely gotten markedly worse. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, I don't particularly want to tell these folks, these kind country folk, that if they die, they're going to rise up as dead. <laughs> Because they probably just they probably they probably would avoid death the same amount anyway. Probably wouldn't be terribly comforting. Yeah, exactly. Um, you all enjoy the best meal you've had since leaving the city. And the oldest oh. son goes on and on about how to cook the perfect hadrosaur steaks. I mean, it is like a steak and baked potato or whatever equivalent you want. You know, just think about whatever your favorite meal is, is like you're nourished <laughs> with this like excellent cooking. He talks about his seasonings and the local herbs he uses and all this stuff. And you are all Well, treated. it happens to be Hadrosaurus, so you got lucky. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got real lucky, son. <laughs> Um, and then afterwards, you are all given like blankets and pillows, and you can make yourselves comfortable in the small guest house they have. They have a little like ranch guest house. Now it's extremely <laughs> cramped because there are like ten of you, including a giant robot person. A robot which, doesn't need to come inside. He, he's not coming <laughs> inside. <laughs> Things are getting real friendly though. Yeah. But you all enjoy a long rest. Yay! Yay! Yay. I didn't really need one or anything. <laughs> Except for Gillian. Gillian doesn't need to go <laughs> She can't she fall is, asleep. She's disgusted by these surroundings. <laughs> Utterly disgusted. Mannix has rolled a lot of insight. I just dropped something on my keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> he explodes with insight. <laughs> We get half our hit dice back, right? <coughs> yes. Sorry. Uh, do you mean to click on your tokens and hit long rest for you? Because I know you guys don't look at your tokens right now. Oh, yeah. I. Sure. Sure. I think I got all everything. Oh, but you okay. never know. Never know. I'll run through and do it for you. Okay. Um, let's see. NPCs could heal up a little bit. Of course, you just give me two more hit dice to do that. Oh, my bad. Yeah, you did that before. <laughs> that one does not quite heal. All right, all your NPCs are refreshed. Everybody's looking bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Ah. Wait, so who do we have with this again? Just, just cut them out. We have the two Tabaxi. Yep. We have Azaka. Yep. We have Aloma. Yep. We have Vorn. Yep. Is that it? Yep. We left a net back at the camp. No, you've got a net. You got a net. We too. do have a net, so we, yeah. so we have one more. So there's eleven of us. Good lord! Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. Who did we leave back at the camp? Oh, Undril. Undril. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Some of us didn't wake up to the same people we fell asleep with. <laughs> That's right. It, it just <laughs> people were trading off all night long. It was messy. Uh, <laughs> the next morning, you're woken up by the family who says there's workings to be done. Around the ranch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now we're ranch hands. And you all spend a solid two hours or so doing chores around the ranch. Is this, Do I get to plug this, chickens? It's 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 it's, it's the Red <laughs> Dead Redemption cows? like montage of you like hammering oh. in fence <laughs> posts and cleaning up giant Jeff Goldblum, that is one big pile of shit piles of dog crap. Or dog Ooh. crap. Dinosaur crap. <laughs> Do we have a dinosaur poop fight? <laughs> if you want to. Medic spends the entire time trying to look busy. <laughs> Man, it's give me a deception roll. Okay. How well can you look busy? Or performance, whichever you prefer. Uh, it was probably better than my performance. <laughs> it usually is. Um, Four hours of chores. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. They disparage about the city folk, and they kind of... Uh, the, the two sons just tease you endlessly. They don't seem very um, mad at you, but they just kind of mock you playfully. Listen, this hat has already had enough in, these, in this jungle. I'm not going to expose it to dinosaur shit, too. 
That is a real <laughs> nice hat. Thank you. <laughs> he looks at it longingly. <laughs> you see him all alone in these woods. <laughs> Barracks gets it close. I know what you do with those dinosaurs. <laughs> you, you too? Come join us, brother. Wait, wait no, 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 hold on. This isn't, this isn't going the way I imagined. You have far less shame than I thought you would. <laughs> then you all have the most fantastic breakfast. Ever just a huge world class steak? breakfast. <laughs> yeah, it's hadrosaur eggs. Has, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what they say. And you're like, wait a minute, they don't lay eggs <laughs> halfway after you've eaten half no the witches. eggs. <laughs> he leans over. No, but we do. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> that's terrifying. <laughs> But delicious. That's right. All right. From there, you can all set off um, if you would like to. So I assume Aloma is still dead set on going on exploring her. Well, actually, let's ask the the lizard folk, the kind lizard folk, about this the star goddess. Yep. Have they have they been there? Have they seen? I mean, obviously, they must have seen it. It's right next to their home. Each of these hexes is ten miles. Keep in mind. Well, oh, well, that's twenty miles away. It's twenty that's miles away. Not- yeah. Um, she does mention that they heard a gigantic crash around a week back, but um, she forbade her sons from going anywhere near it. They were very worried about what the hell that was, and she said they've stayed far away from it. She says, uh, nothing good comes from sounds that big. Usually brings bigger, nastier things. A llama That's looks very worried. Sound? Do what? Okay. I'm just saying that that makes sense. Oh yeah. All right. Well, then if they don't know anything else, we'll, let's let's go. As we're, as we're leaving, though, I will p- kind of pull her aside and just tell her like I won't tell her about the fact that they die they raise, but I just say like like keep your family close in the next few weeks, ma'am. Dangers are only going to heighten in the near future. I don't know what that means, but I appreciate it. We, we try to take care of our own and take care of any travelers that come through here. There was a, there was a young man uh, traveling through here not too long ago. Oh? Uh, he was uh, traveling with a real curious looking feller. Not quite one of us folk. Looked more like one of, well, one of Wubtow's children, if we're being honest. Didn't speak at all, but gave off some really strange smells. He was traveling south and helped my son Spitz out when the herd was attacked by some of the dead. We offered them a home, cooked supper and for them. They were gone early the next morning. Real friendly folk. Seemed like a nice man, kind of sad. Wouldn't say what they were up to, and twerk none of our business anyway. Hmm. Any details, notable things about these two? Well, I'm sorry, you all look kind of alike, but did he did look kind of like you. Um, the other one looked kind of like us, but not really. Hmm. Is this, is this ringing any bells? I'm not, it's not ringing any bells. <laughs> Mm-mm. Um, let's see. Let's see. Go through, yeah, if I can go through your quest log, I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll note it. Mm. Yeah, I guess I don't have. Unless it's now, well, the yellow company was anywhere around here. <clears throat> uh, give me a. Well, at one, I'm pretty sure this... I guess I didn't update it to your quest, but I'm pretty sure... I'm getting an echo, by the way. Is anybody else hearing that? Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a little bit, yeah. 
at some point when you were asking around in the city back in the Port Nyan Zaru, uh, you did ask about Artist Simber, and you remember at some point somebody told, mentioned the fact that there was a person by that description who had a lizard folk or dinosaur humanoid thing with him that did not speak oh. but gave off smells. Oh, okay. Um, don't, I don't I remember that. Yeah, but... I didn't, and I didn't put that on your thing, but I remember that being a, a thing that we talked about. Okay, um, I'll, I'll ask her then. Like, what? Where were these folks going? What direction, if anything else? Yeah, she said she didn't know. They didn't say where they were coming from or where they were going. They were all very uh, mysterious but friendly about it, and they just said they were um, exploring the jungle. Um, but they said they were it seemed like they were heading south. Good to know. You haven't seen any uh, ladies with little dragon familiars, maybe little dragon freckles on them. You haven't seen any of those folk, have you? She shakes her head. All right. Okay, you all setting off? Yes, sir, yeah. That way. Alright, so you've enjoyed a long rest. I finally get to delete a hex. Uh, the next day... Or, uh... Yeah, this is the next morning you travel. Um, uh, uneventful coming out. In fact, the two sons kind of ride out with you for a little bit. Just You can tell they don't have much going on in their life, so they just find that fun. Um, <laughs> for, like, probably a mile or two. And then they finally wave goodbye and head back home. Another couple miles, you see a bunch of, like, a flock of pteranodon, like, flying overhead. Just a really Ooh. cool scene, yeah. Um, otherwise, you all can uh, sleep that night in the jungle, which is way less comfortable than being in the nice <laughs> guest house. I miss the hadrosaur steaks. Yep. Immediately. I should yep. ask for some jerky before we left. <laughs> Hex, as you can't actually jerk a hadrosaurus. Little known <laughs> no. fact. Oh, wow. Aaron is well aware. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> um, it takes you the better part of the day to work your way into the uh, jungle on the next day. In fact, uh, evening is now approached and the sky is getting darkened. But uh, and, and Alamo's getting increasingly worried because you know you're trying to remember kind of where you saw it from Mabala, and you're trying to cross-reference all that, and she's getting more frantic about trying to find you know any piece of shipwreck. And finally, you do start seeing like pieces and debris um, on the ground around you, and you just kind of just naturally follow that um, for maybe uh, you know a quarter of a mile or so, uh, and then you see a wooden vessel caught high in the tree branches broken into three chunks it resembles a ship but there are differences that mark it clearly as not a seagoing vessel the stern is the lowest piece hanging what is that sound okay it stopped the, s the stern is the what the fuck I blame Heather there's a crinkling sound it's not me I'm not hearing it still oh it stopped now yeah, it's it's Reese. Look at that shit eating grin he's got on his face. <laughs> there was, nobody else heard that? It was like that crinkling? Yeah, I heard no, it. I, okay. I heard it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's bring it up. Um, it the, stern, the stern is the lowest piece hanging precariously by its <laughs> rigging about 50 feet above the ground. The middle <laughs> section appears to be 15 feet higher, and the bow <laughs> section is firmly wedged into a nest of branches another 10 feet above that. On the ground level you see a small group of ghouls feeding on dead bodies while a few zombies shuffle around aimlessly. The dead eating the dead. Yep. How I, ironic. I warn Aloma at this point, like... <laughs> <laughs> is it ironic? <laughs> is, that, is that ironic? I don't know. Um, I warn Aloma at this point that there, there's a distinct possibility you're going to see some people you know and they're going to be zombies or worse her face blanches um, she actually um, 
uh, starts kind of walking towards that and kind of craning her neck and trying to see. Uh, you all are over here. Or is it actual? A map. It's a map. We have well, a map this session. I can't. I can't. Not Rochelle. Hey, you're checking on me. <laughs> what are you doing? Let me see those hands. Okay. <laughs> I have been vindicated. Mm -hmm. I'll see you in court, asshole. And I don't think my dark vision's on. I can't see anything. I can only see the our characters, like the little tokens. I can't see out past them. Uh, yeah, those of you without dark vision can't see shit right now. It is dark. Oh, it's dark. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> Good thing we have this dark vision. <laughs> but yeah, dark vision you should be able to see. Oh, I, I see. I can't. You can't? I, can, I literally can only see the couple tokens around me. Like, it's like it's messed up. Uh, I can't see what you're seeing, because... I don't know. I mean, you, yeah. you, your dark vision doesn't let you see that far. I mean, I'm seeing pretty far. Okay. Yeah, I can see farther than five feet. Um, well, if someone wants to light something up, then I could probably do that. <laughs> I, will, I, I, can't. I will light. Okay. I will light a Wookanite just because, or actually, I'll light my lantern because it's got a, a larger radius. Why don't you put a Wookanite inside your lantern and then light that? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Let's get both going. Um, because uh, my lantern is 30 30. Oh, wait. No, I'm sorry. It's 60. Yeah, yeah. 60 30. There'd be light of a sort. Um, when uh, you light that up, you see, uh, you hear a weak voice call out from the treetops. Hello, hello, is anyone there? Um, at this point, a llama shouts back, "Captain, Captain, you're alive!" <laughs> and all of the ghouls' heads <laughs> snap up and begin looking around. Um. I want all of you to go ahead and just roll a stealth check for me because now they're looking around and trying to search for all of you. Manix will physically like slap a hand over her mouth as Ooh. he's trying to do this. And he'll probably make some. This will be a collective it. group check. So as long as more than half of you make the stealth check. Hmm. <laughs> Um, but you do have a lot of NPCs with you. <laughs> That's right. It's a whole bunch of people. Yep. Uh, it's a 1, 2, 20. Jesus, Annette is a fucking ghost. <laughs> wow, it's Maxi both have plus fives. Yeah, I'm supposed to see 60 feet around me for dark vision. I never change your token, so I don't know why it's doing that. Well, something's wrong. All right, it looks like more than, uh, yeah, most of you made. So you all, uh, despite her yelling, you are still <laughs> hidden, and the ghouls do not, uh, have not noticed you, but they are, like, slowly coming around and searching in your uh, general direction. But not like they're pounding and running after you. They're just kind of looking around like a sniffing dog almost. And I have to take these things out anyway, right? We could sneak around them. Uh, yeah, we could try. If we had any leftover Hattosaurus dung, we just put that on ourselves and walk right past them. Is that, is that how that works? Their vision is based on smell. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I've never heard that before. That doesn't seem right. <laughs> Um, I can't. Well, I, I can't see. Force on fire. <laughs> Just burn the whole thing down. It's the only way to be sure. I'll whisper to Aloma. That that was your captain's voice. You heard? She kind of slaps your hand away. She's like, "Yes, I, I think so. There, there's, there's could be survivors still up there. 
Maybe they can't get down. Maybe they're Dude. weak or dying. We have to save them. Sure to all that, but we got to be alive to do it. Be smart, lady. She glares at you, but nods. Um, so no more yelling, and see if we can move around these undead here. Uh, while you decide on what to do, why don't we take a break right now? And we should return in ten or so minutes. All right.
All right, I think we're on our way back. Uh, you all have reached the wreck of the Star Goddess. It's broken up into three different parts uh, high up in the treetops, but on the ground level, uh, you see a bunch of undead who are now on a... Uh, not high alert, but like a soft patrolling now, trying to figure out uh, what was the sound they heard earlier. Right. Um. That would work. Let me go check. Do we see any way to get up there? Um, I mean, you could certainly climb the trees. Um, it is, like I said, the lowest one is 50 feet above the ground, just kind of hanging precariously, um, suspended, we it's rigging, just kind of... We don't see any ropes or anything like that that we could use. No. But, I mean, it does look like you could climb the trees. It would require a... a... I'm still, I'm still got a grappling hook and rope. Mm-hmm. So I could create some sort of a rope situation going up to it. Um, does it look like like we're gonna have to go through these ghouls, or could, does it look like there's a path around them to the? I, 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 like I, maybe I can't see it, but I can't see the uh, the actual wreck. At this point, the yeah, it's kind of tangled up in the trees ahead of you. Um. The ghouls are were basically right underneath it, although now they appear to be somewhat drawn in your general direction. There's still a couple of zombies like uh, milling about that area, just kind of directly underneath the middle section. Uh, you all are closest to the uh, bow, which is the highest uh, section because you came in from the east side. And how high is the bow? Up? The bow is let's see, 50, 65, 75 feet up in the air. Okay. It is a big ass chunk of trees. <coughs> All right. Um, I think we're gonna have to go through these. Um, they're heading our topiary walkway. We can go across. <laughs> Alas. <laughs> Can't you speak to plants and see if they'll create one for us? Let me consult the staff. <laughs> the staff of wonders. I don't know. Not tonight, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It happens to a lot of druids. <laughs> He's got the plain anxiety. Oh, yeah, I can't speak with plants. <laughs> what good is that going to do with us? Do us, though. <laughs> yeah. I've ever read that spell before going, nah. <laughs> <laughs> when, when is that going to come in handy? Speak with plants, transform into a bear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. How does I think that spell can? will do the equivalent of the plants telling us, yes, there are zombies there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look out, there's zombies ahead of you. Oh well, we, yeah, we got Vorn, and Vorn has no problem, no compunction with killing undead. He gives a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're, you're not killing anyone. That's you're right, Mannix. I am. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> the ghouls are. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, we're you going in for a stealth approach? Is that what's happening here? <laughs> Is it a stealth approach, Mister Mannix? <laughs> Born yeah, I mean that way and distract them, and we'll sneak behind them and kill them from behind. There you go. That's, that's a, that's a lot of sneak attacks. Uh, how how shall I distract them then? I don't know. Your alarm call was pretty annoying. That he looks crestfallen. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying that's... to protect you, Mister Mannix. It's. <laughs> It's attention grabbing, which is what we're after. He nods. <laughs> X is a real jerk when he doesn't get enough sleep. 
I'm going back for some more steaks. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I, I, I really want more steaks. I got some to go. He says, uh, all right, wh where shall I go and what should I do? I, I don't want to go too far away from you all. Have him walk, like, down here. And we'll come around the, the north side of these trees. Well, I was thinking, like, up here, and we'd go around the tree, but... Yeah, oh, yeah, that, yeah, 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 that, either, either way it works. Yeah. Uh, points to the northwest there. You go through that clearing there, right? Those, there's ghouls right there. You see them? Oh, no! Yeah. Just get their attention, and when they come to, you know, fight you, we'll be, we'll be there to uh, take them out for you. Oh, we okay. totally will. <laughs> <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> I promise. Take the tabaxi with you. <laughs> <laughs> Throw the tabaxi at the ghouls. <laughs> Actually, the tabaxi sitting on his shoulders might not be a bad idea. Then they could use their bows and just, like, snipe. That, that's, that's not a bad idea, actually. Like, like, <laughs> like a walking turret. I just turret. want Vorn to have cat missiles. <laughs> <laughs> Just a cat can on each shoulder. I think that's against my programming, Mr. Mannix. Wait, wait, which part? The cat missiles? <laughs> yes, the cat missiles. <laughs> Tabaxi look extremely indignant at this. <laughs> well, just let them sit on your shoulders. You have no control over what they're going to do. Baxi look like they're they look at Coles for like reassurance for this. Just down high ground for their yeah. bow and arrows. Yeah, it's the because I mean Vorn is like seven feet or eight feet tall. Yes. So Yeah, they'll be nice and tall, and then they can just shoot down and help distract them. And I shall reassure them that I will be coming up from behind to kill them. Okay. A very Cautiously, but eventually do climb up. Vorn obviously gives him a head up and puts him on his uh, either of his shoulders. Uh, they're pretty small and lithe, uh, even the more lanky ones, so they can fit on there rather comfortably. Although Vorn looks like he doesn't, uh, he seems like he's slowed down with them on his shoulders. He can't really walk very well, but he just kind of gives a nervous like thumbs up again and heads off in this direction. And when he gets to about halfway or so, he says, uh, Alarm! 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 And immediately all the goals are like... Um, I'll right, give you guys a go. chance to reposition yep. before we begin combat. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to try to stealth around to the south, around these trees. Oh, yeah. Do, 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 do. God, I've got so many fucking tokens now. <laughs> There's a lot of characters. This is ridiculous. Are we all walking on our toes and have our hands up like that? Um, you all down here, give me stealth bows. Yeah, uh, give me a stealth check with uh, advantage because of the distraction Vorn is producing. Huzzah! Twenty-one. Adequate. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, you guys are uh, unnoticed as you come around the corner. You see a couple zombies milling about. Um, they slowly begin making their way towards Vorn. The ghouls um, definitely run up there um, and begin to close in. So let us uh, roll for initiative. Um, you all will get a surprise round before um, Vorn and the tabaxi and the ghouls and the zombies. God damn! Natural twenty initiative. All right. Wow. She was ready to go. So many things have to go. Who was that? George. <laughs> Poor George. George. Yeah. <laughs> He's not here to. Um, I'm gonna have just all the NPCs go together. Essentially, that's just gonna fucking fix a lot of my issues. 
So they're all going to go with it where you see the Tabaxi initiative. Uh, except Vorn is still going to go on Colossus' turn. All right, do we have any ties? Theron, I'm pretty sure you're dexier than a ghoul. I hope so. <laughs> and that's it. Those are ninja ghouls. <laughs> Cool. Uh, Gillian, that natural 20 earns you the right to go first here with the surprise round. Uh -huh. Okay. It seems like a good setup for an area attack. It sure does. <laughs> None of us are in the middle. It's right. The I know, one time right? The like, thank God. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you get to go first there. before the melee jackasses come and scream. That's right. You, you, you don't have a giant bear right in the middle of everything. <laughs> so. Okay. All right. So, let's see. What is this range? Okay, so I'm going to cast uh, Shatter, which has a 10-foot radius, and wait, hold on, let me look at my other spell. Remember, Chris, once upon a time, sent me a bunch of spell effects in a folder. <laughs> I was like, I could use some of those. That's right! Yep. Yeah, so Shatter is the one I can cast uh, 60 feet away, and it has a 10-foot radius. So, why is this thing... Okay, well, so I'm going to cast it... Let's see. Like, in the middle of this should be pretty good, right? 10, 15, 20, 20. This is 30, so it actually be smaller than this. Oh, 10-foot radius, not diameter, so that's even bigger than... So 10 is a 20-foot, so 20 20-foot, 20 foot, right? 20-foot 20, yep. 20 yeah. diameter. So it's this big. Yes. Okay. Yeah. In the middle of this. Chunk of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oops. Well, yeah, a little further over though, so yep. that it gets this fella over yeah, here. Yeah, I gotta put it on drawing mode, or else it snaps to the grids. Excellent. Uh, I'm thinking we can get three ghouls and two zombies. There you go. Right there. <laughs> Shatter them. This is the loud. All of Killian's things are very loud, which is very thematic. I know. I don't know why. I chose very similar spells, apparently. But You're walking around with bagpipes. It's, yep. it's hard to yep. yeah. say what. They're both loud, but this one is not... It's not the one that pushes them back. Okay. Uh, con saving throws for the ghouls. Oh, merciful heavens. Wow. That one is puffs out its chest. <laughs> that one fails. And that one succeeds. So failure is a half damage, yes? Half. No? Half, okay. Yeah. Um so the first one takes half damage, which is five. And then the next one fails and takes the full ten. Five again. And zombie turn. This loud ringing. Uh, you hear more undead sounds from slightly deeper in the trees. They appear to be um, roused by this noise. Uh, zombie <laughs> sure the horn is nest. Quite the constitution. Let's see what that equates. Yeah. Undead are so hardy, which is weird. Uh, that one does fail, though. But so. they have an extremely low AC. <laughs> they do have an extremely low AC. Surprisingly low. Surprisingly, as we have learned. And that one. Uh, that last zombie, that's massive damage. Because he failed his save. 
Which means he has to make another constitution saving throw. Mm. Uh, which he makes, so he is not affected by massive damage. Alright, uh, is that it? Oh, she's gone. Kales, I guess that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Shatter! Disappear! Let yeah. him go. Uh, so, the dark blue ones probably are going to be a little bit more stout than the ghouls, right? Uh, the zombies versus the ghouls. Um. Well, let's see. You can give me a... What was our roll for that? Was undead. Uh, you can give me a religion or arcana check to determine if you think zombies or ghouls are stronger. I figure the zombies were because there's only two of them. <laughs> right. Those are the ghouls. The ghouls are the blue ones. Uh, oh, I think, the zombies yeah, I are the ones he... closest to you. The ghouls are the ones that look like they're gnawing on an arm. Yeah. No, I have it right. So the the dark blue ones are the zombies. Yes. Yeah. I I know nothing. You know nothing. <laughs> they're all they're all undead to you. All right. Well, fuck it. So here we go then. They all need to be slain. 20 feet of movement. On top of getting advantage because they haven't gone in the round yet. If I hit them, it counts as a crit because they are surprised. I imagine Kles just whispers all this as she tries something. <laughs> <laughs> if I hit them, it's a crit. <laughs> <laughs> she like, haven't acted yet. Shing. Stalking. <laughs> if I hit them, it's a crit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I forgot to turn my sneak attack on too, by the way, so. Oops. Uh, I think you can still turn it on, because 24 will hit them. No, it, it, it won't work, even if... Oh, you have to do it before it you do the attack? Yeah. Oh, that's stupid. You could just roll the attack again and just roll that damage, but... Oh, it did work. Anyway, oh, so did. that's okay. 21 initially, but then because it's a crit, I have to roll the dice again. Yeah. Oh, my lord. Which is... Another 1d8 plus another 2d6. Yeah. Eight. Then only one d eight. That's your regular uh, yeah. weapon. Do I put my dex modifier in again? No. Do you put your just, your modifiers just, in the crits? Just, just the, the dice. just the rolls. Yeah. Okay. So another ten. So thirty one points of dance. Yeah, thirty one <laughs> points of dance. That's a stab. Gillian, you come up and stab it through the head, and it heads just explodes like a freaking watermelon. Just sorry, it... who 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 went up and? Gillian. Ah! Ah! Was it this time? No, 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 no. Happy <laughs> International Women's Day. All the That's same. right. I, I'm yeah. doing my part. Yeah. I'm doing. I didn't even notice it too. It just flew out there. <laughs> I did my part. <laughs> Um, that zombie's head explodes. It Again, even, thank you. It doesn't even try <laughs> to do its undead fortitude. It can't. It is no longer existing. You did so much damage, I don't think it can even hope to roll that high. Explode. Annex. Um, he doesn't have any this awesome surprise around things, but he will. He whispers, all right, they haven't acted yet. I'm going to get a crit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Just to see if it works. Um, Manix will reach into one of his 100 pockets <laughs> and <laughs> pull something out and whisper, giant frog, I choose you. <laughs> giant frog. I should have had a giant frog ready. Probably. <laughs> That's probably gonna come up a few times. Probably. <laughs> uh, yep. You can throw it anywhere 60 feet. I throw it like behind the ghouls over here. Okay. Fully expecting it to die. He's got. 
he's not. Yeah. This is more like he's using this more as like distraction, like a bit beacon or something. Just. Oh my gosh. Um, he doesn't go now though, right? Um, I'm not sure how this works. I'm not sure either. Uh, I'm gonna roll initiative for it. Okay. But if it okay, it wasn't lower anyway. If I give it orders, it t it just it does understands that your commands. It, yep. Yeah. Or any other frog people's commands. Perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> Who else speaks frog? Frog noises. <laughs> Manic's command will just be stay alive as long as you can, frog. Wow, also not running away. <laughs> attack, the, attack the ghoul. I was about to say, they just running yeah. <laughs> That's what I immediately thought, too. Like, you get postcards bad. for the next several months. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing fine. Still alive. I've entered a vocational program. Yep. <laughs> Safest place I can find. Visit Scenic Baldur's Gate. <laughs> Uh, that's my action. I'll just step back here. <laughs> I can't find the flea. <laughs> nope. Farron. Oh, guess what? Why is there so much echo? I don't know. There's a lot of echo tonight. It's very annoying. Um, I don't. Can I'm you not, see? Yeah. On, can you see on your token if you uh right click your token? <coughs> Do you see multi-sided at the bottom? Yes. Click on that and then click choose side. Uh-huh. Now oh. look at that slider. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, so my. oh you're out, talking to Reese. Okay. Shout out to Sean, a.k.a. Cert2B, who posted a long and detailed comment on how to create a multi-sided rollable token for Theron's wild shaping. So now you wow. can transform your current token. We have to resize it, obviously, but... Um, and now it just stay well, your... thank you. Yes. <laughs> very much. It's very cool. That is very exciting. And then <laughs> whenever you transform, we'll just add another health bar onto your token on top of this one, which, um, how much do bears have? I don't suppose you know offhand. I probably should at this point, but I don't. <laughs> well, either. I can add that as a, a thing on there. The one thing I can't do is get to your character sheet quickly. I usually uh, shift click the token, but since that's 34 right. natural, right? 34 without rolling. Okay. Are you just keeping that? Because I can just add that on there. Sure. Okay. Which it should be visible as soon as I add it on there for all of you. But yeah, really, really cool effect. This yeah. eliminates a lot of headache for switching tokens around and having to redo initiative and all that. So it's not even a, a different token. It's like it's the same. It's the same. It's the same Theron one I token? use. It's the same Theron token. Yeah. It's just multi sided exactly also, how I did it. will also save save the confusion of there being a Phantom Therans in the it back is, lines. Yep, that's also true. All of those are all of those are fixed, so very cool. Nice. Alright. I'll attack the uh northern uh cool. Okay. Flanking with the frog. Flanking with my good friend. <laughs> the frog. Uh, that ghoul took quite a bit of damage from the shatter blast, and you managed to bite its head off. Excellent. Oh, we should have had. Uh, technically, Vorn went on Kalesa's turn. Also, we'll have. I guess we'll go after Theron. Okay. Well, you said Vorn doesn't get, oh, the, well, he surprise doesn't get the surprise round. Oh, that's true. Thank you. That's true. I'm going to claw the one on my right. Bottom right. Oh, yeah. It's an initiative uh, thing automatically upgrades. That's cool. Uh, bad AC, but not that bad. Yeah, ghouls have slightly better AC than a zombie. Swing and a miss. Ghoul ducks and weaves. No. <laughs> All right. Continuing the surprise round. Um, the frog doesn't get a surprise round, however. <laughs> he's he's uh, surprised at his own existence, right? Now. Yeah, that's right. Um, I guess all the NPCs do, so they're gonna rush up. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Zaka gets her sword out. 
uh, her scimitar. And she will keep her multi attack. I'm feeling magnanimous. <laughs> Yeah, don't forget my tabaxi. Uh, they did not get the surprise round, though. Thanks. Thank you, Anon. <laughs> 14. You um, mean cat missiles. Cat a missiles. and B. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were, the tabaxi were part of the uh, distraction. Although they probably were not totally on board with being the bait here. Yeah, um, they were fine with it. Yeah. <laughs> I've decided they're fine with it. Llama runs up, and George runs up. I don't think either of them are quite able to make it up here, though. Uh, George can pull out his bow. And shoot that at a zombie. I'm going to do your bow. This one? He's got a plus one bow, doesn't he? He does. Something. Is that rolling? There we go. He's mega. There you go. Yeah. 20 will hit. George. Apply sneak attack. Can you apply sneak attack here? If they're engaged with somebody else, yes. Um, he's shooting at the input value. What the fuck? Those character sheets are weird. <laughs> I don't know what. It, just, it comes I don't up know with, what you're doing. It says input value apply sneak attack one to apply. I'm scared. Oh, maybe he did something different because mine doesn't do that. Mine's got like a little checkbox uh -huh. in the character sheet. His does too, but it's like I don't know. Uh, I think he does have sneak attack there, yeah. Where is he at? Oh shit, I need to reroll oh. that. Crap. Mm. When, you, when you click the damage... It like pops up with another value, that's bizarre. Maybe because you're the DM and you're doing it? I don't know. Because mine doesn't do that. It says 1d6 times parentheses apply sneak attack. <laughs> All right, let's just see what happens if I hit a one. All right. Well, once sneak attack was applied. I guess that worked. Well, that's weird. I don't know how he set up a sheet. Was the person he attacking within five feet of one of our allies? Yes, yes. Azaka had made it up there. Then, then yes, his sneak attack went off. All right. Uh, I did fortitude for the zombie. He's at 12, I believe. Uh, the zombie is staying up, but obviously very low because it's rolling its undead fortitude. Alright, we start the proper round now. Um, actually, I guess Annette could come up and attack. Yeah, she's got anti-undead stuff, too. She does, too. yeah. She's actually a cleric. God, roll 20 is still Do we... lagging like shit for me. Uh, second flame, that's the ticket. Yeah. Which, if the zombie fails, he is dead. He's not very dexterous. He fails, he's dead. She burns that zombie up. Mm. Burn those undead. Alright, zombies are down. Gillian! Uh, at the top of the round, you hear the... Um, uh, the survivors call out, uh, uh, Anyone down there, please, I, I hear something coming. And sure enough, you see the branches some distance away from the tree begin to shake as if something large um, were moving them. That's another fucking T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> One can only hope. Now, if it were T-Rex, I'd be doing the, uh, you guys see a puddle of water begin to shake. Kind of thing. <laughs> That's the only way you, you tease a T-Rex. There'd be Jurassic Park references. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One uh, way or another. I I can't see here. Is, should I be able, like, I, I can't. Your light source like a... hid behind a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't realize I was the only light source. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my dark vision still messed up too. Ugh. Well, okay, that's cool. I mean, you could light your own light source. Well, I can, but that's really? gonna be like my action. Oh I... well. 
Uh. <laughs> yeah, took the light and just ran away. <laughs> <laughs> it's like from the trays, like sorry guys, I didn't realize I was gonna fuck things. Stupid! I can't, I can't do anything useful here. I can see great back here. <laughs> uh, when I come back out, I'll put my lantern on the ground <laughs> <laughs> so everybody can see. But for the time being, sorry. Ah. Uh... Okay, well, um, uh, I guess I can tell that there's a thing here. I love so this. That's gonna... me. <laughs> huh? Who's that? That's a, a llama, the woman from the. The, the, the ones you're going to the shipwreck for. Okay. Well, I'm going to cast light on her so I can see. <laughs> okay. She lights up like a Christmas tree. And says, ah! Oh. I hope you're okay with this, because... <laughs> you're now our point of reference. <laughs> you're, the, you're a literal beacon of light. That's true, sir. Chat, this search to be also just pointed out my normal hide and then pop back out action is not really gonna work since I'm the only one that lights up. I'm just running around the tree. <laughs> Light. Oh, okay, now I can see. Excellent. Okay, fantastic. She just starts glowing, uh, like, brilliantly. <laughs> okay, well, I think I'm just gonna hang out here then, because that's that was my action. I moved and then cast light. Uh, I'm sure the other members of your party that cannot see also appreciate this. <laughs> uh, Coalesce. <coughs> um, 5, 10, 15, 20... 25, 30. And I'll go for this guy right there. Okay. Ghouls. 23 to hit. Uh, yes. For 13 damage. Massive damage on a ghoul. And then... I'll do my offhand as well, too. Mm -hmm. Where is it? There it is. Sorry, I'm still catching up. It's... 20 to hit. Whoops. Is... Forgot to turn the sneak attack off for another 4 damage. Uh, okay, he fails his, uh, con save. Uh, I believe he's okay. Uh, for another four damage, you said? Yep. Okay. He's looking pretty bad, which ghouls probably always look pretty bad. Total of 17 <laughs> damage. Yeah. Alright, uh, Mannix, uh, Calder, Man, uh, Lan what should I say? Calder, Light Source, Mannix. <laughs> I just fucked that joke up immensely. Yep. <laughs> God, I couldn't remember your stupid name. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like now it wouldn't make any sense for me to hie be tree and pop out. <laughs> this <laughs> one, like, lit up thing in the darkness. Lit, like, lit up light source. <laughs> just light emanating back from behind this tree. <laughs> uh, yeah, so and I'll just come back, come out here and see what's going on. My <laughs> <laughs> guys. Sheepishly. Uh, I hope you didn't miss my lantern. <laughs> uh, Killian okay. glares daggers at you. <laughs> she should. I, I, I did just say I glare, but I was muted. Uh, so. okay. <laughs> we we <laughs> understood so me. well. <laughs> 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 
Mannix, also, when are we going to go back to a town again so I can take range attack? Because I've had a fucked up eye for a long time now and have been unable to use my crossbow. That's true. You, well, you can use it. It's just not going to go I, well. Not as well, yeah. So instead, I will step between uh, this uh, zombie and the bear. Or is the ghoul and the bear? And I will cool. rapier the ghoul. <laughs> Uh, into melee. That's that's right. I don't like it. Well, you did just fine right there. Good lord. Yep, for 15 damage. On oh, you assholes, your sneak attacks. I swear to goodness. <laughs> uh, that is massive damage for that ghoul. Oh, Born was supposed to go on my turn too. By the way. Oh shit. Yep, you're right. We'll do that again. Alright, this must be on roll 20, Zan, because they are still lagging like crazy. Ooh, resist the... Wow. Massive damage again. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. That was all my movement, so I cannot even disengage. Um... Oh, well, if I dash, he'll take an opportunity to attack against me. True. I'll see where I am. Maybe the bear will finish him off. Uh, so we'll, <laughs> no. We'll do, we'll do Vorn real quick, because I was Kalesa's, uh, and he'll come up and attack. Uh, just one of the, the one uh, Kalesa was attacking. Vorn, I haven't actually used your punching in quite a while. Punch them. Yep, he says, okay! Oh my god. <laughs> oh, right, Forn's a giant robot. With yep, a <laughs> he just brings both his fists down. The tabaxi literally, like, both are wide-eyed and hanging on for dear life as he just brings his fists down and crushes <laughs> that ghoul into a pulp. Uh, now we go to Theron. I guess I'll finish that one off. <laughs> I appreciate it. I guess. Manix is doing you all a favor by being up here in melee come. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, That's what he mind. thinks, anyway. Oh, I He's know. kissing my ass. <laughs> Good thing oh. I have an advantage. Mm. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Good thing. Wow. Well. <laughs> sort of. That was enough to kill that ghoul, though. Manix did a bunch oh, of damage wow. before. Wow. Rake your claws right. across it. I will move up and attack the other one. Oh, boy. That was close. Let's see if I can do it again. <laughs> nope. Jesus wow. Christ. Wow. wow that is max, max damage. damage. Okay. It's like 16 seems unusually high. Yeah. Destroys that ghoul. Um, right, You'll never kills. amount to anything in life. <laughs> you all hear... Killed all the zombies? All is safe. You all hear more ghouls emerging from um, like the other side of this tree, essentially. Um... But, and you still hear the worried cries of the people up in this ship, like, Oh, hey, help! Something's coming! Yeah, we're not... We're gonna try to get to you, but we're kind of busy with the, the zombies down here. And a... Are those red X's where the actual yes. ship parts are? Yep, okay. those, are, those are ship parts. Um, can, we, can we tell which one the voices are coming from? Uh, f mostly from the middle, but you do think you hear a, a voice or two from the rear end. You don't hear any from the front, the bow. Can someone yeah. tell them to be useful and not just cry? <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have any weapons up there? Like, do you throw rocks? Uh, we're dying. <laughs> Alama says, hang on, we're, we'll get there. We'll come to you. Um, more ghouls emerge from the, uh, from under the forest, though. 
it is their turn, right? Yeah. Um, Alright, we've got a ghoul against a Zaka. Just gonna hit. Uh, for some damage. And she might be paralyzed? Is that what that is? Constitution, yeah. Constitution saving throw. Wow! That ghoul gets in a blow, and you see Azaka's still kind of groggy, and it just totally, like, stuns her. She just kind of shudders for a second and reels backwards. Paralyzed for one minute, and they have to do it at the end of their each of their turns. Okay! Um, another ghoul attacks Theron Bear. For Jesus. four damage, and a allow it. con saving throw. Champ of Constitution. Mm -hmm. uh, another ghoul attacks the frog. It's too close. Wow, these attack rolls. God, these ghouls are just yeah. yeah. Uh, digs into the frog, but frog's still up. And another one attacks Kales. Oh, my rolls have finally run out. <laughs> um. The tabaxi will sling their bows and fire at the nearest ghoul. Shoot, I don't know their character sheet up because I didn't act before. Oh, roll 20. Why is your lag still here? I blamed it on the <laughs> big map last time. I got more to do with how many like tokens are on the map. I don't know if you have more now. I mean... There's a lot of tokens, I guess, controlled by me, but it's never usually takes this long. All right, bows. All right. Eleven damage to the nearest ghoul. Uh, I'm gonna wait and apply that number afterwards because it's gonna take too long. Um, a llama will come up and attack a ghoul. God damn it, I have her character sheet up too. Y'all have too many characters. <laughs> Quite effectively. Seven damage. Azaka's stunned, but I guess she gets to repeat the saving throw? She does, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> wow. She is still stunned. All right, she's sucking it up. She's pretty. She's still up. tired. Yeah, yeah she's, she's pretty worn out. Um, Annette with another sacred flame on Mr. Ghoul. Oh, sorry, that's not Con. Oh well, he fails anyway. Four damage. Oh shit! Now it's the giant frog. <laughs> go go, giant frog. <laughs> Giant frog will attempt to bite the nearest ghoul. Effectively! Yeah! For <laughs> five damage. Yoink. <laughs> uh, zombies are dead. Whose turn is it next? I'm still waiting on roll 20. Uh. Vaxi. George. Oh, shit. George. God damn it. Yeah, did the Tabaxi <laughs> did ever get to go? They did. They did, they yeah. Did they, they, they shot the ghoul near you. Oh, okay. Oh, they went first. There were more oh. zombies? Where are the other zombies? <laughs> uh, ghouls all appeared from the trees. Ghouls are popping out everywhere. Yeah. Uh, she is. Is she still immune, immune to the stun effect, though? Maybe she thinks she is, and it's psychosomatic. <laughs> <laughs> Someone get her a placebo stat. Yep. And that one took five damage. God damn. Yeah, roll 20 is still taking like a solid 15 seconds for you to update any of these eight hit point values. <laughs> 
guess it wasn't the big map. Um, George will run up and stab somebody, a ghoul, as soon as I regain control. Any moment now. Go, oh, George! Should have given control of George to one of us. Yes. I should have given all these NPCs to you. <laughs> <laughs> Just divvy them up. Seriously, roll 20, I will kill you if you do not update right now. What the hell? <laughs> uh, I'm going to start using pen and paper to track hit points. There we go. That will be much quicker. George! Run up and hit a ghoul. You said that as if Raymond was here. <laughs> Twelve will hit a ghoul. Uh, yeah, well. God damn it, your stupid, stupid character sheet. I hate it, George. Why do you have pop-ups? I don't want pop-ups on my character Why sheet. does he have pop-ups? I Are don't you sure know. It's on your end? None of us have that. I His character sheet, I don't know. I think it might be user error. <laughs> I will ask him about this when I see him next. Say, does your character sheet ask you to apply sneak attack? Question mark. Press one to apply. Because that makes my whole thing do the lag thing again, where it's like, oh, we're gonna take twenty seconds to process this information. <laughs> or next time, you know, you just. Say no, and then just roll the 2d6 later. <laughs> right. I know. Wow, that's good damage, though. That was good damage. Mm-hmm. All good job, George. right. Gillian at the top. Uh, in the round now, at this point, you hear um, the sounds of... Um, it sounds like a bestial undead. And you hear several of them as the treetops continue to <laughs> shake. And you think you see large... <laughs> shapes moving up in the trees towards the shipwreck. And Alama starts to give off like a very worried like, what, what is that? Something we're gonna have to kill, obviously. Mm. We can't see what it is right now though. Like yeah, it's, it's just looks like tree. Uh, give me perception checks. From all of us? Whoever wants to try to see what it is. I see all things. <laughs> My 17 is better than your natural 20. I'm still waiting on updating George's damage to the ghoul. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> Kles. My Manix and Kles see whatever it is. Okay. <laughs> I, got, I got a nat 20. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, at first you recognize the giant four-armed apes that you saw and fought before in the jungle. However, once they get close enough, you quickly realize they have exposed flesh and bones showing, and they are lumbering with not the nice swinging grace of a beast, but with the one-minded thought process of an undead creature. Okay. I forget what these guys are called, but yeah, I remember them. Giant monkey man. Monkey man! We fight undead monkey men! I also remember they hit like a bitch and hurt. Right. That's what I remember too. <laughs> tree bunnies. <laughs> yes, they're tree bunnies. <laughs> if not, they are now. <laughs> That's right. Graceful tree bunnies. Okay, well, I'm gonna deal with enemies I can actually. Like, <laughs> like fuck the things. See the enemies. Yeah. I wonder if it's all these characters. I mean, I'll try closing all these character sheets, just doing one at a time. We'll see if that helps. Sir 2B says it's because of the HTML5 that it could be the number of tokens, the number of sheets you have open, um, 
or just too many elements, or all one thing, or all of the above. Computers oh, are stupid. Wow, whatever you just did, you hit with fucking everything. That was a good one-two punch right there. <laughs> I don't know if I need both attacks. Nah, I don't yeah. know how low he is in health, but... Uh, that's 20 damage, is that right? Yeah. Uh, I'll need another attack, yes. Although, if that's if that's all one damage, that is massive damage for him. That's two. No, it's two. I accidentally rolled... I, I didn't roll for damage after I hit the rapier, but I did the rapier and the crossbow. That I'm, I assume they both hit. Oh, yeah. And then it's eight, eight damage for the rapier and 12 for the crossbow. Okay. I, I guess I could have moved further to get a flanking bonus, but I did not. You didn't need it. <laughs> yeah, you can't do better than a crit. All right, that was. I mean, it was the character sheets. Um, that is massive damage for him. Six, I believe he's stunned. Uh, nope, can't take reactions as disadvantage on attacks. Oh, put a little note on him. You hit him done good, though. Um, Kaless. Okay, so... Both the ghouls by me haven't been touched yet, right? <coughs> Um, the one to the right of you was what? shot at by the tabaxi and has a few arrows okay. sticking out of him. Okay. So we'll go with that one then. Uh, no, we'll go with this one. Because then I get my advantage. The frog gives a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, frog. I don't know. Can uh, does the frog thing only work against uh, smaller creatures? Is that how that works? With those it's, it's just small yes. creatures. Okay. Yes. So he just bites, just a regular bite. Yeah. Twelve damage. At this point, the frog is just an advantage machine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The frog looks crestfallen. <laughs> You're my inanimate object. You don't get. To Look crestfallen. Oh, the frog is just extremely put out by this. Is the frog sentient? He's a statue. The frog leaves at Mannix. <laughs> <laughs> the frog puts out a press release. <laughs> Summit creatures from wondrous figure are indeed people, too. <laughs> Just because we are completely obedient does not mean we are not our own thinking <laughs> creatures. Uh, that ghoul does look pretty messed up, but it's still up. You got the extra three damage. From I that, okay? did. Manix. Calder, I hate frogs, Manix. <laughs> I don't hate frogs. <laughs> I just think they're inferior beings. They're <laughs> Completely subservient to, to me. <laughs> I like Manix less and less the longer this campaign goes on. <laughs> Just <laughs> feeling he's, out. He's not. I'll be honest. He's not a guy you'd want to like hang out with. <laughs> He's one of those guys you get like like three beers into with, and you're like, oh god. <laughs> you have really bad values. Yeah, like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> um, he'll go over here. Called her three beers, man. They <laughs> <laughs> called her three beers, and you raised the manix. <laughs> Bubbles to the surface. Uh, he went. <laughs> yeah, he's you fucking Grand Torino is what it is. It's just a... <laughs> exactly. Ah, uh, goddamn yeah. tabaxi. <laughs> yeah. He will flank this particular ghoul. I'm sure he has feelings on ghouls too, but <laughs> ironically, he's okay with ghouls. <laughs> 
Oh my god! <laughs> cool, it's provided necessary wow. service. <laughs> Alright! He rolled a one and a two. Yep. Well, so this is embarrassed for you. Yeah, that was that was embarrassing. <laughs> Max blame, it on gonna, your, blame it on your bad eye. That's right, it was my bad eye. Max is gonna disengage and step behind the giant. The frog statue. begins making choking laughing noises. <laughs> You're my familiar! You don't get to laugh at me. <laughs> I will restatue your ass right now! <laughs> That's right. Theron Bear! Oh, it. Hides behind Born. Alright. I'll uh, attack the ghoul to my left. With advantage? Oh no. Uh, 12 will hit a ghoul. Alright. <laughs> Needed that advantage. I really did. I'll attack him again. Alright, that's running away, but I think it was all the character sheets I had open and was trying to like move between was slowing me way the hell down. Hey. So it's actually. Wow. Nice. Again, you need the advantage. Wow. Yep. Well, Gobbles that ghoul. Bears need That's friends. <laughs> yeah, that was significantly slowing me down. I had probably, I mean, I did have like a dozen sheets, but I was doing that minimize thing where I was trying to rapidly uh, go between sheets. But holy crap, that was slowing me way down. So, interesting. Thank you for mentioning that, sir. Good lord, do I have any ghouls left? I do. There's two ghouls. Yep. <laughs> Uh, ghoul against frog. The fight of the ages. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid frog getting hit by a ghoul. Frog, uh, takes it like a champ and puffs out its chest at you, or its throat, I guess. That's what frogs do. Um, the other one continues to attack Kales. Ineffectively. Yep. Uh, Tabaxi will fire their bows at the ghoul. Uh, 12 does hit. 12 does hit. Nothing if not consistent. Um, 14. Uh, both those arrows sink into the ghoul's head. Kroon, kroon, and it falls down dead. Nice. Um, Azaka's still stunned, but she gets a chance to shake it off. Jesus Christ. Azaka, you are just not doing it. Not really doing it, yeah. She's been laid out this fight. She didn't look like she took any damage either, but she just got, like, just shaken up by that ghoul. Yeah. Um, Net will... There we go, trying to save my character sheets, too. I'm used to doing that. Uh, that ghoul... I believe it has disadvantage... Is dexterity. Well, three is good enough. Uh, that one dies from the sacred fire. Mm. Oh, yeah, and George. George runs up and helps the frog. <sighs> I don't want to attack with George. He's got a stupid way his character sheet works. I don't like it. Well, just roll the dice then. I don't know what his freaking dice are. 1d20 plus. Oh, thank God, he missed any. Oh, no, he's got advantage. <laughs> oh, he hit that <laughs> Yep. Apply sneak attack? <laughs> Would you like to apply sneak attack? Would you like to apply sneak attack? Uh, he does kill that ghoul. Would you like to know more? Nice. I think that's the end of the ghouls. I don't see any more. I believe that is correct. However, at this point, you see those shapes lumbering towards uh, the shipwreck. And uh, there are several are figures even, now crying <sighs> out. You can see one arm, like, waving over the midstern, going, Help! Help! So they're not... The, the shapes in the trees aren't even... The ships? Aren't what? The, the shapes in the trees, the eight creatures. Mm -hmm. 
Are they, they're not coming? Are they going towards the ships? They coming for us? They are not going to you. They are up in the trees, going towards the uh, the shipwreck. Uh, and at this point, they've almost reached the bow section, which is the front section. Shit. Which is which one? Uh, ping that. Uh, I can't tell right which one. one's a f that one. Okay. So the left one is the lowest one. Um, at fifty feet. The midsection is 65, and the right section is 75 feet height. Um, they're all about 30 feet long that you can see, pretty much evenly broken up between those three chunks, all hanging precariously um, amongst the treetops. And you can see these giant... Um, it looks like there are three of these uh, gorilla and zombies um, lumbering towards the shipwreck, and they are about to reach the bow section. Tree bunny is the accurate term. Tree bunnies. <laughs> so at this point, we're trying to get the people out of these ships before they kill them. That's oh, yeah. basically what's going on. Yeah, that's what a llama says. Like, oh, they're going to kill them up there. Well, yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> at this point, I don't know if jumping's a bad idea. I do have a grappling hook that we can throw up. Yeah. Um, I don't know what my, like, I don't know how how far I can throw grappling hook. Well, we can always let Vorn throw it. I'm sure uh, we can let Vorn throw it. it. Yeah, he could probably throw it throw it, throw it way farther than I can. Vorn gives a tentative thumbs up. Um. All right, I will put my grappling hook in Vorn's hand. I'll just say, throw it up to that middle section right there. Uh, and then I'll further explain to Vorn. Hooked in, goes around the middle <laughs> section of the boat. Yeah. <laughs> explain to, explain what a grappling hook does. Yep. Yeah. Uh, he nods, and, uh, let's see, you'll give him an athletics check. Uh, he attempts to throw that grappling hook up there. Uh, how long is that length of rope, do we think? Oh, Vorn. Boy, uh, no, look at how long it is. It is... I think it's called hempen rope, is that what it's called? Yeah. So at least probably 50 feet. I'm guessing about 50 feet. Yeah. It actually doesn't say. All right. I'm Rope, gonna... whether made of hemp or silk, has two hit points and can be burst with a DC 17 strength check. Great. That's all it says. All right. I'm going to rule it's 50 feet because I think that's what a normal rope is. So okay. Vorn does manage to make perfectly get that grappling hook in a great position, but you realize with some dismay that the middle section is higher than the length of rope. So the... The rope is uh, all the way up there. It is hooked on there, but the rope is about uh, 15 feet above the ground. All right. Well, the we get the Vorn, if we get Vorn into catching, like, like have them drop down if they can. Mm-hmm. Then we'll uh, have just Vorn stick his arms out or whatnot. We'll put a pillow down there. That way somebody, oh, George is also... Got climbing abilities. It does. You're muted, Heather. Or not Heather. Shell. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yeah! <laughs> it's like I had to match you! <laughs> you were muted, Rochelle. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> That's so good. I saw. We're being judged so hard right now. What, what's funny is I don't, I don't do this in person. But I'm, <laughs> I, you, I do. you do this in person all the time. Oh, okay, you, I did it. I did it. Did you? I don't I think he it. does it in person, do you? I, I did it in person it. all the time. He does in, it all the time with all of school. us. He even does it with himself. In He'll mention himself as Reese or something. It's you the funniest thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Back, you know, back in the day, I used to call Reese. By each other's names all the time. I used to do that constantly. You did. Oh. But that was a long time ago. That was like high school, college. I remember era. there was one time you ran through like five names. You, <laughs> you got to mine. Yeah. That, that, you were yes. desperately trying to think of my name. Yes. You know, Reese by any other name would smell just as sweet. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I can... I can jump high. That's what I was saying. There you go. Yes. I don't. I don't remember how high, but if that's helpful, I can jump high. How high 
can you jump? I don't remember. But earlier when you were talking about things being 60 and 70 feet up, I don't think it was that high. You probably, like, try to jump branch to branch or something like that and make your way up. Like Like some sort of tree bunny. (laughs) Um, Movement jumping. You can cover a number of feet up to your strength score. Uh, That's a long jump. Or a high jump, you move into the air a number of feet equal to three plus your strength modifier. That's that's why I can't remember but how much it is. But ring of yeah. jumping, I believe, triples your normal jump. Yeah. So, what is? So you're trying to jump up. So what is your three? What is your strength modifier? One. Or okay. Is, or you mean? Uh, so it's a plus like, one. Basically? Yeah, like okay. a plus one. So you're normally you'd be able to jump four feet high. So the ring of jumping allows you to jump 12 feet with one jump. So straight up into the air. Straight up into the air, yeah. You can extend your arms half your height above yourself during the jump. Thus, you can reach above you a distance <laughs> equal to the height of the jump. Plus, this is a stupid, like, rulesy rule. <laughs> so I can get, like... Like 14, a couple feet. feet. Right. I would probably yeah, say you could jump just... about 15 feet, yeah. <coughs> well, now I've forgotten how high I need to jump after all of that <laughs> nonsense about Heather and I being interchangeable. <laughs> <laughs> Distracted by casual sexism. Happy International Women's Day, everyone. <laughs> That's right. Well, it only lasts for another 14 minutes. Oh, yeah. I think... Who did we just lose? We just Reese. lost Reese. <laughs> I just oh. heard... I didn't even see it. I heard noises. What happened? <laughs> you left. You came back. Um, I was going to say another 14 minutes, then it's Reese's time <laughs> to shine. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, back to Mende. <laughs> I guess this one, the, the the leftmost one is 50 feet in the air? Yes. So maybe if there's branches, you might be able to jump 50, like 15 feet up into another branch. I'm not sure if that's feasible, but... Can I try to scamper up the rope? Like, do the, the Vorn bouncy table and try to catch the rope and scamper up? Uh, you sure can, shuffle. yeah. And, and Gillian could probably try to jump uh, branch to branch as well. Can yeah. I try to jump too? No. I want to jump branch. I have to a branch. climbing speed. <laughs> no one you, have a, you really have a climbing speed? <laughs> oh, yeah. Bears can climb, I suppose. That's terrifying for the people on the ships. They're like, oh, we're being Help saved. Us. Oh, oh, God, there's a bear. A I'm bear is up. climbing up. It's a bear oh, and, a, up the tree. and a jumping fish lady. <laughs> um. The only thing I need to know is, I mean, uh, Coleste is going for the rope, so she's going to go up the middle section. I need to know where the rest of you, which uh, part of the ships you're targeting, because this is actually a separate map. Oh, boy. Well, we know that there's people in the middle one. We know there's people in the last one, right? Yeah, you haven't heard any noises from the front section. So I'd say some people go up their leftmost one. Probably, like... I'll do it. Uh, Class, you go. Up, you go. You scream. You're saved. <laughs> Class, you go up the middle one because that's. Where... And Gillian, you hop up the the leftmost one. It's that one's a little bit low, and you can probably reach that one in third. I guess. Clamber your way up the left one too. Sounds uh, like a plan. You all don't have to take orders from Mannix. You can. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't, but you will. <laughs> well, now I won't. God, no. I'm going up the right one. <laughs> oh, no! Just to spite you. Can I pull out a single ball bearing and try to drop it on him from the rope? <laughs> a single ball bearing? Ball bearings are my thing. <laughs> that don't work. <laughs> Just hinder your own party. Yep. Um, I have a hammer for some reason. Actually, can I drop that on him? <laughs> That's his <laughs> thing also. That is his thing. His hammer of like a bug squashing. 
I also have a crowbar. I haven't used a crowbar before, so <laughs> sure. All right, so what and is And the... that flask of alchemist fire. Let's drop that on Manic. Hold on. What what is the current situation as we go over uh, real quick? Is we'll, we'll basically be ending the session. I just want to make sure things are set up for next time. Uh, I'm going up the middle. Okay, you're you're climbing up Vorn and then just kind of jumping up to the uh, rope and then that Manix grappled and then going mm -hmm. up the rope which is connected to the middle. Okay. Um, Theron Bear is just using bear form to climb up the tree. Yeah, as fast as possible. He wants to get up there first. Okay. He's very worried about these people. <laughs> and, so, yeah. ah! and then Gillian is jumping. Doing the nice tree bunny gazelle maneuvers. Um, and then presumably George would also be climbing. George now has climbing abilities okay. with yeah. gloves. That's true. Um, George will probably go up the middle, I guess. Or uh, he could climb. Uh, maybe, you know what? George is crazy. He'll just go up the right side. He's gonna. We all know yeah. he's gonna. We all know he's gonna do something crazy. Um. Give me. Let's see. Gillian's actually jumping from branch to branch, but uh, Theron, give me a uh, athletics check. And Gillian, give me an acrobatics check. Uh, Kales, give you an athletics check with advantage because you're climbing up a rope. I am super good at acrobatics. And then I will roll for George. <laughs> oh no! Can, can I do? Uh, can I do acrobatics instead? Uh, it is you athletics for you, but you do have advantage. Okay. Uh, you do have advantage, or not advantage? You do have inspiration, plus five. I believe. Yeah. Yeah, Gillian, if you want to use inspiration here. I will use my inspiration. <laughs> wow! Wow! That's okay. Funny. This is for uh, George. George climbs it up with ease. I nat twenty to my athletic. Yeah, he did. It's not nice. a natural twenty. That's an advantage twenty. That is an advantage but twenty, but yeah. it's yeah. <laughs> it still counts. All right, uh, you all make it up to the various parts of the ship. Right when you see these massive four-armed gorilla zombies reaching the front of the ship, and they look ready to tear apart um, the poor survivors. Kales, you make it over the middle. You see um, a couple people, all in really, really bad shape, um, one of whom looks like the uh, uh, prominent leader of this, the captain. Um, she looks like her leg has just been shattered. And she would not be able to move very well on her own. You see, like, collected um, bowls, like, makeshift things to collect rainwater. And um, maybe in, like, a dead, like, animal nearby that they've managed to kill in the treetops and feed off of. But they haven't been able to leave this section. And the rear section um, holds another uh, pair of figures. And then these gorilla zombies are approaching. And I think that is where we are going to end it uh, for tonight. As we have made it to the top of the wreck of the Star Goddess. Uh, thank you to Chris, Heather, Rochelle, and Reese for playing. Thank you to our wonderful fans for watching. Go to roguewatson.com for recaps and patreon.com slash roguewatson. If you'd like to support the channel, we are live streaming our D&D adventures every week. And we will see you all next time, although it sounds like we might be rescheduling our next Friday one. Uh, stay tuned for updates on that.